Okay, Danish kroner to euro divide by 0.75 times by ah that. Sorry, I caught in the middle of a few numbers here. Trying to trying to work out a great product we're going to talk about today and how much it might cost one of my customers. Uh, but it's in Danish kroner and trying to work out what it will. Uh, well, you know, I'll do that another time. Welcome. It's Commsverse 2024, Commsverse TV here. Of course, we're in our pre-event programs lining up towards the event. And of course, that event is going to be on, here we go, the 26th and 27th of June. It's going to be at the uh, Mercedes Center, of course, uh, just south of London. And uh, we're going to have fun. We're going to be recording a bunch of live shows uh, from the exhibition on those two dates. I think we're up to seven hours at the moment. Different suppliers, some of the speakers and everything else. And our guest today is actually a speaker at the show. So why don't we bring those in as well? And if I click this button here, hey guys, how are you doing? Hey Steve. Cool. So hi, Christian hi. Uh, from Performance Metrics and Moraine, of course, is here as well to keep everything moving forward. Uh, Christian, you're feeling good on a Friday afternoon? Oh yes, I am. The sun is shining and looking forward for a cold beer later on today or tonight perhaps. Uh yeah. And I'm assuming you're somewhere in Scandinavia or somewhere in that area. Yeah. Copenhagen, to be specific. Copenhagen. So, Very yeah. nice. Yeah, my Beautiful. favorite restaurant's there. Beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. Moraine's been there a few times. Has stories to tell, but not on this channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the late night versions of the, the late night story. version of yeah. Comes yeah. TV. Oh, that would be a cool idea. Fireside chat. Yes. <laughs> neat, neat, neat. So we are here to talk about performance metrics. Um, uh, you're attending Commsverse this year. Is it your first attempt at Commsverse, the first attendance, or have you been there before, Christian? We've been there before as attendees, but this is our first year as being a sponsor. Right. Um, what made you decide to uh, take the step? Well... One of the big reasons is actually that our new product, which we actually thought would uh, make a difference in the market, uh, right. was one of the main reasons for why we actually made that decision. And also because since we've been there for the past, past few years, we could also see that the, uh, the, the number of attendees was also growing. And we thought this is a good place to be because uh, everyone who is uh, anything within the team's uh, world uh, is attending so it was a natural kind of a uh, next step for us no that's pretty pretty cool makes sense yeah yeah makes no sense. it's good now I, I i do have to ask christian how long does it take to grow a beard like that oh i think i've been growing my beard since i was seven years old so 40 <laughs> years approximately wow right <laughs> So in, in the winter time, are you secret Santa Claus or yes, coming from I am. the north? Okay. Yep. Cool. I've been asked that many times. Yes. I, I, I be, I'll edit that out because we don't want the children to be upset. No. No. <laughs> and trust me, there'll be a lot of children watching this video. Yes. I couldn't imagine Probably. that. Probably. Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, let's kind cool. of dig straight into the really interesting things. Um, what freebies are you going to be giving out at the show, Christian? What can we get? What swag can we get? Oh, well, it, it's going to be water bottles. Well, you have to put in the water yourself, but we've just seen that you typically will go around to the to the places where you can get your coffee and your tea and everything, and you would use a cup and you would throw it out. So we just thought, why not just a water bottle? So you can refill it. I, I would love I to was... say that is a really innovative idea, Yep. But <laughs> no, I have to say, uh, uh, two weeks ago, I was actually at another conference and I promised, I, I, got, I got a water bottle from, from a company as well. And I promised somebody that I would let them taste my gold cock, which is a whiskey, by the way. So I just poured some gold cock into that bottle and then I was able to walk around on the uh, on the event and then give a few people a little sip of whiskey without security throwing me out. So yeah, 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 do yeah. not underestimate the power of a uh, water bottle. Uh, uh, the only problem was... Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. The only problem was on Saturday, my daughter had to go to ballet and uh, she forgot her water bottle. So I rinsed mine out and I gave it to her. And she said, Daddy, it tasted like water, but it smelled like whiskey. <laughs> 
<laughs> she knows her daddy. I know so that's good. What you're talking about. So I think there's the answer, Christian. To be different, you need to do the water bottles, but we're expecting a good shot of a local Copenhagen whiskey in there. So there is amazing <laughs> Danish whiskey that I had last time I was in. If you ever listen to our other podcast, you'll know that it's about whiskey. We do Microsoft 365 and whiskey podcasts. So Yeah, that, interesting uh, combination. Yeah, it is. It's been <laughs> yeah. going for over five years now. So we've, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're still surviving. So, yes, whiskey is a big thing for us. Anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. so let's go on. So um, what do performance metrics do? Let's start off with that. Because if it's the first time that you've actually been in the exhibition – I'm guessing a lot of people won't actually know uh, or would be interested to come and have a chat. So what is it that performance metrics do? So what we do is, uh, well, we have two main mainline products on our platform, which is called Coherence. That is a pure cloud-based solution. And it's uh, customer-facing as well as partner-facing um, our platform. So the first product we have is our DDI manager which as the name implies is all about number management in teams. And obviously there are a lot of competitors out there doing exactly the same. Um, so but what, our what does that just yep. do? Because I'm, I'm coming into teams more from a collaboration perspective. I don't yeah, know okay. that much about calling. So no. what is it and why should I get it? So the reason why you want to have uh, a number management uh, platform is actually that uh, if you want to telephone enable your users in your organization, one thing is just adding a number and removing a number and so forth. That is a very cumbersome task. But the way you can do it today is either you have to do it via PowerShell or depending on what kind of connection type you have, you can also do it via the Teams Admin Center. But knowing exactly what the numbers are being used for and keeping that overview is the challenge. Yeah. Looking at what where the, um, the numbers are actually um, I should say located, what prefix they have. Is it a Danish number? Is it a UK number? And so forth uh, is also very important. But also you don't want to run out of numbers uh, just as you're about to assign. You know, For instance, if you um, are hiring new staff members, then you want to assign that number. You would very much like to know, do I have to order some, some, some new ranges or do can I do just go with what I have today? But also making it easy and more intuitive uh, on assigning numbers and removing numbers, changing numbers uh, for the specific users. And the most important thing is also the role-based role access. So in order to use our platform, you don't have to be a Teams administrator or have that role assigned to your, to your Microsoft account, yeah. which actually makes it possible for us to kind of say that you can, you can only do... Um, specific things just about the number management and nothing else. But if you have, you know, these Teams administrative rights and you go into the Teams admin center, you can do a lot of other stuff. So if you just want to focus on, you know, managing the numbers and making sure that you run Teams as your PBX, that's what you would need to do that more smoothly. And uh, you can, uh, I mean, basically you can uh, assign access for your, if you have got your system integrators, your partners to help you out, and as well as, you know, support in your help desk. And it's very important that you also can, can keep an audit trail of who did what changes uh, and where did they do it, who removed the number from a user and, and, and added a number and so forth. And keep track of your licenses as well. Are we about to run out of licenses? So we have to buy some more. So right. that is what so number basically management it's a management tool for uh, teams calling um, yeah. to be and to make the best of but best of most of the features. Uh, yes. And I'm guessing uh, I obviously I'm I'm reading some of the stuff that we were looking at earlier, but uh, the complexity of DDI and working out where people actually get to if the line's busy and all that kind of stuff for your call queues. So um, I'm guessing it's all of those metrics that allow you to have a smoother call center functionality within your MS Teams environment. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say that the, the DDI management part is just the, the regular kind of day-to-day -day work with, with the user management as well. Uh, yeah. That's one thing. And on top of that, we've got the auto-provisioning part. So if you are being onboarded to Teams, we can do that onboarding task very, very easy. Based upon uh, the job back you're in, I guess. Yeah, also yeah. that, yeah. So, and the other product that we have is our Voice Q365. And uh, as the name implies, got something to do with voice and queuing in Alpha 365, which is a provisioning That's as clever. well as management of uh, core queues, Microsoft core queues. 
and the Microsoft auto attendance. And then we got our own extension to that, which we call Core Queue Extended. And the reason why we have developed that little feature is so that the customers will have the ability to offer callback services. They will uh, be able to uh, offer position announcements for customers calling in, waiting in a queue. And we also got historical routing. Now, these are elements that you typically would see in a contact center or call center, yeah. that how you kind of, you know, how you route the calls and, and look at agent availability and so forth. And on top of that, you will also, uh, you, you get the ability to add your mobile phones, just, you know, the mobile extension or any other kind of uh, PSCN extension that you have. So you can actually go cross platforms with our call queue extended. And we can even allow the agents themselves to decide where they want to answer the call. Do they want to do it in Teams? Do you want to do it on their cellular phones? Or do they want to do it on a plain, you know, classical old uh, desk phone? With a, with a little round dial that goes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or if you're running some of, you know, Cisco, Avaya, Mitre, whatever platforms out there, and you want to kind of have a one place where you administer your agents and you have one place where you pick up your calls and you collect the, the historical uh, data on calls, et cetera, that's where you yeah. also can use our our call queue extended in the voice nice. queue. Nice. So all in then, all, it's a, it's a series of extensions, management extensions, reporting, uh, around all of your call center functionality that you can add on to MS Teams calls. That's cool. So, Marine, yep. was there any acronyms or letters in there that we need to cover? Any testing? Don't, no. Like DDI. What, 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 what's a DDI? Yeah, no, I was, I was direct dialing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's what ah. we use here in Europe. If you go to the States, you will say DID. So, yes. yeah. Okay. But it, it, so, it's, so, that's when your extension number 251 internally also has a, an external number coming in. So, that's a direct dial into 251. There we go. I can go back to my voice calls now. Gotcha, gotcha, yep. gotcha. And yeah, yeah. About, about yeah, the, the, the call queues, I mean, that's typically things that you need if you want to do like, um, um, what's in uh, like contact center things. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and really? typically we'll also be using it on a departmental level in your organization, right? You can have your sales department, your technical department, your yeah. uh, HR. I just want to call someone from sales. And yeah, that and you want to make sure that you just don't call one person, but you will try and kind of hunt down the one that's available within that department. Gotcha. That's also where yeah. you'll be using call cues. So, yeah. and, and on top of that, we also have developed the dashboard, a real time dashboard for the call queue extended as well as the regular Microsoft Teams call queues. So, you can also see how many calls are waiting in line. What is the average waiting time? What is the, the, uh, the maximum waiting time? Things that's metrics that you typically will, you know, have in a call center, in a contact center. But now you can actually typically say that you can contact center enable your organization uh, at a fraction of a cost. Because you already have those, many of those components if you're using Teams, Teams. Voice, right? Yeah. So we're just connecting the dots, so to speak, or closing the gap, whatever you prefer to call it. And then we do reporting on top of it uh, via Power BI. Uh, so it's very, very easy to also customize the, your, your historical reporting. And uh, yeah, and you can embed it into whatever you'd like to embed it into. Neat. Commsverse is definitely the place for you guys to be because... Uh, I've we've done Commerceverse since it started. I think we've been to every one over the last three. Is it three years or four years? Well, whatever timelines I don't do very yeah. well. Yeah, uh, and um, uh, in the organisation we currently work for and with, we needed exactly that functionality and performance metrics were not on the list uh, because That's we didn't know about it. So there you go, yeah. missed opportunities. But yes. that brings us on a little bit to it is a growing competitive market, isn't it? The whole yes. kind of First of all, just management of M365, uh, but specifically in the in that call space because Microsoft have done their usual kind of 80-20 thing. We'll give you 80% of the functionality and then our partners and our developers can do the 20% stuff, which is the really hard stuff anyway that you yeah. know we don't need to do. So it is a competitive market you're in. Does that make you nervous or does that challenge you? It challenges us. I think it's, it's great to have competitors and... Uh, yeah, because without competitors, it's also really difficult to kind of tell your story. What is your narrative as an organization, right? Uh, so having someone that you can can be you know, compared with is always good. And right now with what we have developed and, and now that we are offering call queue extended or extended call queues, um, 
we are actually being compared with more and more you know uh, companies um so because now we are actually also having one foot in the contact center world which is uh which is quite interesting because how far can you get with what you already have um with a with a, a few and uh, you know few uh, bricks and, and and building blocks without having to yep. um to to purchase a full blown contact center and you was uh, you was referring to the drawing around the back. You've got a lot of visuals that sort of visualize the way that it's set up, so it's not just yep. all about Power BI reporting and that kind of stuff. Nope. So actually, either even though this is in Danish, uh, and I expect that everybody understands Danish, that's why I, I, I use this roller. I, I, I can read Danish. I didn't realize it before. Look, call cues, uh, auto attendant. Yep. I like this. That, that's amazing. You're a fast learner. All right. So uh, I'm right. <laughs> No, but you can actually see the call flow, and 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 behind me, you can also see our dashboard, the real time dashboard that I just mentioned before. So uh, yeah, Neat. that's very cool. Neat. And is is it just a user interface, or is it also like a, a graph extension, or or some PowerShell things that I can use? Yeah. So basically, I mean, no, you we don't have we don't how should I say expose any kind of PowerShell commanders that you can use. But our services are based on Graph and PowerShell uh, behind the scenes because those yeah. are the only ways that you actually can get Interface. data out of the customer's tenant, right, yeah. and right back to the customer uh, in, with the changes that you have uh, submitted through our portal. So that's how that works. Um, and I think that's uh, the common grounds that every. Even you know, if you look at our competitors, that's the same yeah. way that they would have to do it. So everybody's kind of you know are restricted in the same way. But some of us have been able to do some quite neat workarounds mm -hmm. and to get things you know uh, more flexible and and uh, scalable as well when it comes to performance. Yeah, because a lot of the functionality, if you're going to build it in there without buying the tool, you're going to use PowerShell, you're going to use Workflow API yeah. calls. Uh, yeah. And it can be done. I mean, I know that uh, one of one of the providers for doing callback has has just built as a, a little callback workflow, so people can identify what's been in and out. So, yeah, yeah. no, I think it's there, and you're right. It uh, it just simplifies the whole kind of process. So that's it does. Cool. It does. Yes, and and also in terms of you know. If you look at large organizations that you know acquires other organizations with when you're using our platform, you can actually do that cross domains or being cross tenants as well, uh, mm -hmm. which is also one of the how should I say it? Uh, that's one of our you know competitive uh, features, I'd say. Um, so, yeah, that's that's uh, and that's also for partners because partners when they log into our platform. They just need one login and then they have access to all the customers. So it's easier for them not having to have delegated access to each and every customer's tenant. They can just log in through our portal. We can white label it. We can uh, rename it. Um, and then they can That's use cool. this. That's a help desk. Their help desk, their support desk uh, can actually um, help their customers resolve issues faster and do change. Yeah. Marin's yeah. now going to be one of your partners is going to get into voice and calling on MS team. So that's his Any way goal. how I can make money is a good way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, but do, do you do you also provide uh, something like like templates for example for partners? I can imagine that there are certain <laughs> scenarios that come back again and again and that you might want to do something like that. I I don't know. I really don't know. I've no idea how this space works. We have, well, I will charge you for the idea if you see templates on your product now. You will know that. No, no. what do you mean about templates? Uh, just I don't know. So let's say, let's say I got, uh, I'm, I'm a partner and I got a new customer. They want to onboard their uh, contact center. Is there like a next, next finish or a number of templates that I can use that would do a, like a, a parallel or a serial or a whatever kind of. Really, I have yeah, no idea how this works. No, 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 no. Group. Well, yeah. So, it, it using using our platform when it comes to setting up, uh, let's say, call queues and auto attendance, that is re really a next, next, next. So you just you press the plus sign, and then you give your call queue and auto attendant a name, and then you wait for Microsoft to respond back with now it's provisioned, and then you go through your configuration steps, right? And yes, in that context, we do have templates or default settings so that, for instance, that you don't have to select, you know, the same you go from, you know, if, if you say that the template should be UK, um, English uh, as a default voice and, and stuff and, and settings with regards to presence and, and uh, presence settings and so forth, 
that's part of the default settings, definitely. And your cool. timers being, you know, uh, wrap up time, uh, depending on whether you as the agent finished the call or the customer just, you know, uh, hung up. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of settings there. Yeah. So it's easy, really easy. Uh, are you going to have a demo version on the stand in Commsverse? Yes, we will. We will. We'll be showing videos and we also have some demo versions that we can uh, we can we can present to the customers and the attendees coming by our stand. Nice, nice. And you're That's speaking cool. at the event as well. Yes, I am. I am definitely. And what are you speaking about? To. Is my next question. <laughs> well, basically, it's going to be about the Voice Q product uh, because we think it's really a differentiator in the market with the features that we got. Nice. And also talking about how far can you get, you know, the 80-20% rule, right? So yes, how far can you get with what you got already without having to buy that uh, very, very expensive contact center? Um, that's what I'm going to talk about. And, of course, I'm also going to mention some of the upcoming products that we will be launching very, very soon, such ooh, as our ooh, attending ooh. console. Tell yeah, us. yeah, Good. yeah. So give us, give us a just, hint. What's yeah. new? Yeah, what's Problem. new? Yeah, so we are going to release an attendant console on top of our call queue extended so that you can have your receptionists answering calls in a more professional manner so nice. that you don't have to completely rely on being you know, in a Teams client, but you can actually use a more customized interface based on Azure communication services. Yeah. So it's uh, easy to deploy, easy to manage, and it's very, very low cost as well. Nice. And how much how much copilot is involved in all these things? How much AI is involved? Well, because we're, now, we're talking about receptionists, but I'm I'm thinking yeah. of getting rid of <laughs> them and then uh, yeah, <laughs> can become Miss Copilot can answer our phones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I I've seen a video from Microsoft about this, and it looks very cool. So obviously, it will work from the first time. So <laughs> it's it's on the roadmap for a future release. I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> Next comes verse. Yes, at some maybe, point in time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. That's good news. That's mm -hmm. good news. And and um, I, I keep asking everybody. Uh, so, have you done the cars and the uh, Mercedes driving around uh, around the event yet? No, I haven't, which is a pity. But I was so occupied last time I was I was visiting and the and the and before I'm. I'm not expecting to have the time this time either, but maybe some of my colleagues will be doing it. And that would be uh, fun, I think. Um, it's worth turning up a day early and just having a day to you, yourself, yeah. and a nice big AMG Mercedes and a bit of fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. Steve, that's that's the difference between us and, and these people, all, the, all our guests that we had on. They're all busy. Yeah. We're just yeah. having fun. They're all working. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, if my but it's boss, fun to be working. If you, if you see this video, Moran's just joking. Don't worry. Yeah. We're busy all the time. <laughs> no, but it's yeah, important to have fun right. with what you're doing, right? Definitely. And I mean, and that's Absolutely. what we have here. We are really have a lot, lots of good times, and it's also you know fun going to to comes first. And you know, no, meeting other people that and you know that balance, and... uh, that balance is important. And then when you get these opportunities, I mean, uh, how else? Oh, mind you, you're kind of from Copenhagen, and and so you get ice on the roads all the time. So the, your opportunity to go sliding around a frozen lake, I guess you get that at least once a year. Uh, we don't get chance to do that. We have to go and do it in Mercedes world. <laughs> I think you should try and visit Copenhagen in the winter time, definitely, because then you will experience uh, that. Cool. Winter is not really winter as it used to be. Um, Damn you, climate change. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taking the fun out of everything. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and if, if you go skiing, right? I mean, this is it's just horrible. You go skiing in the rain and in the dirt, not in the snow. And oh. uh, yeah, that's just so sad. Oh, well. I mean, when yeah. I, many, many, many years ago, when I had less gray in my beard, um, uh, I used to get involved with a, a rather large car manufacturer, four letters beginning with F, and it's not Fiat. Um, and we used to sort of send our cars your direction uh, to be cold weather tested. And yeah. Uh, uh, and yeah, but I guess they don't do that so much now. Quite honestly, it's probably easier to freeze it in place. And uh, yeah, I think uh, they do it in Sweden. It must have been Sweden because they have some tracks for that where they're testing yeah, the, the trucks and 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 the cars and everything. Yeah. We used to go to Arizona for the hot weather testing. So we used to yeah. have a circuit there. And then uh, it used to go to 
So certainly Sweden, maybe Scandinavia to do the cold weather testing. And the mm -hmm. poor old testers had to sit in the car for an hour, either in the sweltering heat for till the engine block got to a certain temperature and then tried to start the car, or they were in Sweden or whatever, and it was down to minus 15. And they were then wanting to make sure that they could start the engine. I'm sure that they can recreate those environments nowadays, but there you go. But that's uh, that's what it was like in the old days. It was good fun. Yeah. All right. Well, look, um, Marina and I are going to kind of say goodbye and maybe talk about what we're going to do at Commsverse. Uh, and then I'm going to hand over to you, Christian, so you get a chance to have the last 30-second word on the video before we go to our closing credits and uh, to tell everybody why they need to come and see you on your stand at Commsverse and what they're going to gain from it. So that'd be cool. Uh, Maureen, I know that we've not spoke about this before, but you're speaking at the event as well, aren't you? Yeah, I'm speaking what? again at the event. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be a session about Viva Goals, so on the Viva okay. track. Um, so that's going to be fun. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I'll let there you will be. Goodbyes. There will be some half-naked men involved as well. Oh, they're back. Yes. The half-naked men are back. All right, well, that will be interesting. <laughs> so, no, look, it's Steve Dolby here saying hi and goodbye. And the last words are coming from Performance Metrics. And Christian, here you go, my friend. Thank you. So if you're looking at buying a contact center, a call center, and you are on Teams already, you should come by our booth and uh, see what we've got to offer with what you already have if you're using Teams. Um, we've got a lot of neat features for managing your Teams uh, platform, reporting, and also the contact center services being core queue extended. And of course, also our upcoming product here that will be the attendant console. Very interesting stuff. And we can talk a lot more about role-based access and real-time dashboard, historical uh, data and everything. So uh, come by our stand and um, have a chat with us. Thank you.